Hey guys, Ben here, North Country Outdoor Guys. I'm joined by Ferguson, who's over there. Just out doing a quick uh, test run of these new uh, snowshoes I got. They're tubs, I believe they're Wilderness 30s. Um, never been on snowshoes before, but decided that since I live in an area that has winter pretty much six months of the year, it'd be a good idea to start enjoying the winter. So I picked these up uh, from Eastern Mountain Sports on sale. And we're out here at one of our favorite places to walk, try them out. Um, the snow is not as deep as I thought it was going to be. We got about 12 inches the other day, but some of it's melted. And of course, we're back in the woods, so it didn't get as deep back here, I don't believe. So I don't know how much advantage these snowshoes are having over just post holing it. The first part of the trail was pretty uh, well traveled, and now we're getting into the... Uh, Lesser traveled part, but I don't know if I'm sinking any further than Ferguson is or not. Uh, I'm sinking a couple inches. Ferguson's over there. Ferguson's over there uh, gathering firewood for... That's his favorite thing to do. Uh, so I'm just using some black diamond ergo grip, cork ergo grip, trekking poles with uh, snow baskets on them. And uh, I just got some rubber boots on because we're not really that far out. But So these are the tubs. Wilderness. I think it's Wilderness 30s. I'll, I'll add a note if it's not. He loves being out here. He's been cooped up. It's been too cold. It's about 28 right now. So we'll let him run on down the trail. I'll see if I can walk in these things and carry the poles. It definitely requires uh, some getting used to. You really got to pick your feet up so that you don't drag. And it's, it's a bit of weight added, obviously. So there's some adaptation that goes on. But not too bad overall. I feel like it's really working my lower back for some reason. I don't know if there's anything to that. Or just because I'm having to lift my feet further. I'm probably panting, but it's a little more exercise than I thought it was going to be. It is hunting season here in the North Country. In full swing, I believe. I uh, haven't heard any gunshots. This is school property, so um, nobody can actually hunt on this property, but they can hunt around it. And bullets don't know boundaries, so. And I don't know how close anybody hunts to the boundary, and I suppose one could mistake. Ferguson for a light colored tiny deer, but let's hope not. All right, so it looks like we're getting to a part where the truck's been back in here. So the school recently installed, I don't know if you can see that, these trail markers. They've got a system of trails here. Don't think it's complete because if you follow the red markers, which is the longest trail, the one we normally take, they just kind of end without further direction. So I'm thinking they got started and then the winter came. So this is going to be fun here. They also um, have a sugar shack here for the, I assume for the kids. And they added this year, they added a couple of shacks with sack collectors in them. That's that. That's a big one. So when we first started walking up here about 10 years ago with Odin, they were using the classic taps with metal buckets. Oh, there was a chipmunk or a red squirrel or something. We just missed it. Um, they were uh, using just the regular metal sap buckets. But then a few years ago, they started using the uh, tubing, which to me is probably a significant labor savings. You don't have to lug those buckets. And it basically pumps, it'll pump the sap right back to your collection tanks where you can then gather it up and boil it. There's a front shot of the collection tank. I mean, that thing's probably at least 10 feet long, at least five foot wide, I would say. So you can do your math on that. It's half of a cylinder. You can do your math on that and figure out what the volume of that thing is. But those of you not familiar with maple syrup production, you need a lot of maple syrup to get a gallon. 
and a lot of work goes into it. And that's why maple syrup is so expensive. Yeah, so walking on this truck trail is not really, I don't know if this helped me any. Hopefully you can hear me over the crunch of the snowshoes. This is what he does. He runs and gets his energy out because he's only just over a year old. And normally, if you've watched my other videos from here, we don't encounter people. So I let him run. We're still working on coming when called and whatnot. So this is a safe place relatively. We do run into people on occasion. And hopefully I see them before he sees them. I can get them on leash. But he really needs to burn this energy. Because he gets cantankerous if he doesn't. We're near the end of our normal walk here. Well, normally I would turn into the woods down here, but with the snow being deep, we're gonna bypass the, oh, and put make that jump. That's what he does, he takes a little side trip into the woods, but he's slowed down considerably now because he's been running full tilt. Pretty back here, not as pretty as it was when the snow first came because it all stuck to the trees and you had that. Hey, buddy. We gotta break him in. I'm gonna try to do some winter camping. I don't know if we'll get around to it this season. I mean, <laughs> we know, I know we got a lot, of, a lot of time to go because we don't even think about getting rid of the snow here until around April at the earliest. So. Just now, November 2019. And this is all frozen, hard packed. These, I chose these snowshoes because they were a good all around pair. I don't plan on doing any alpine uh, snowshoeing. It's out of my fitness level at this point um, so it's going to be mostly this kind of stuff or small hills I suppose um, there he, goes. he usually stays where I can see him he's going full tilt on that and he'll cut back through here Crazy. That goes past the turnoff that I would take that would take me deeper into the it's a little over a mile. This is gonna be just under a mile we today. for the shake. Maybe it'll stabilize. That's another trail there. That's the blue trail. They're all paws. As the trail markers are paws because this with the school mascot is the Panthers. So we're going to come out to the, the main field here in a second. Oh, we've got the bird feeders up. That's cool. I'm going to get mine up. Oh, little chickadee. I don't know if you can see him up there. Just hit the feeder over there. I don't know the feeder. 
Oh, there must be, the kids must be uh, coming up with different reusable bird feeder, reuse of bottles for bird feeder designs, which is so cool. Ooh, almost fell over there. Ooh, buddy. It is. This is a challenge. I'm terribly out of shape, and each year I get more and more out of shape because I tell myself I'm going to do more of this kind of stuff, and then I never do. It's just easier to sit and watch TV. But I'm going to try to really break out of that mold. So normally, if we'd gone what we normally do, we'd come out way down there where the trees break and then come back down this way. Sometimes we go out here across the field back to the car, or sometimes we continue down there and complete, uh, make a right, make complete the loop, and come back out over here. I'll show you. We're on a little bit of a hill here, so. And this whole pack stuff, so. Let's just see if I can negotiate this without falling on a rope. Pigeon toed that. I don't know if that was a correct way to do that or not, but wasn't that bad? Let me draw the truck line. So you can come out basically way down there in the corner where that track goes is another way in. Or if you go through there, back behind, I don't know if you can see, there's a building, there's a plastic greenhouse back there. That's where we normally come. We walk from over in the parking lot around by these shacks, which you can't really see them right now, but back behind in there, go behind the woods around where that building is, and then the circle because say that whole thing if you go all the way around is a little over a mile this is just under a mile so you see there's a big off to the left there's their big sugar shack that's where they process all the maple syrup i don't know what they do with it i've never seen it for sale or anything i don't know if they just use it in the school or if they give it to the kids what they do with it but school's undergoing a big renovation that supposedly is not going to affect my tax bill. So that's that was a good thing. But a lot of opportunity in this woods, I think, for for teaching the kids. <laughs> it looks like they're doing, they're doing some of that. Um, they do have some interpretive signs that they put up. So somebody's working on something, but and that's good to see, seeing as how I was a. Uh, conservation major in college it's always good to see people young people get involved in the outdoors so we are going to finish up going across that field back to the car hey guys well, i hope you enjoyed that ramble through the woods while i rambled on uh, talking the whole time but uh it was a good uh workout to see if i could talk and and uh get a little workout and still to keep talking um, I'm a little winded, but that was a test of the uh, snowshoes, the Tubbs Wilderness 30s. Seems to be okay. I think we'll be out here again when there's more snow. So from Ferguson and I, we'll see you again next time.